people think, oh, soil is dirt and dirt is everywhere. But our lives depend on soil. There are places that have already lost all of their topsoil. What's happening to the soil and what's happening today is very scary. The United Nations declared soil finite and predicted catastrophic loss within 60 years. We have identified 10 soil threats. The soil erosion is number one because it's taking place everywhere. When we lose soil, we threaten our food supply, clean drinking water, and a lot more. Out of the dust bowl. In the past hundred years, the emphasis was on what can soil do for plants and what can soil do for people. Tons of priceless topsoil. And we're now realizing we have to take care of it and reverse that and ask, well, we have soil to manage. We can't just, just degrade it and leave it. Millions of acres laid waste by thoughtlessness and neglect. The impact of soil degradation could total $23 trillion in losses of food, ecosystem services, and income worldwide by 2050. Soil is the habitat for over a quarter of the planet's biodiversity. So it plays a very important role in mitigating climate change. Climate change cannot be separated from food insecurity, from the loss of biodiversity, and from pollution. Here's why we're facing a silent soil crisis and what that means for the world. This is the Rodale Institute. The farm here works on regenerative organic agriculture. We grow almost everything that you can grow in Pennsylvania, from corn and soybean, wheat, oats, to forages, alfalfa. This is kale. Okay. This is actually the birthplace of modern organic agriculture. Projects we do here all are around, centered around improving and rebuilding soil health. We have farming system trial that's been running for 42 years. It is the longest running side-by-side -side comparison of organic and conventional grain cropping systems in North America. This is all organic. The decades long research has found organic agriculture produces yields up to 40% higher during droughts, can earn farmers greater profits and releases 40% fewer carbon emissions. How's all that possible? The Rodale Institute says it starts with soil. So when we talk about healthy soil, we are talking about all aspects of the soil, chemical, physical, and biological, that should be in a perfect status to be able to produce healthy food for us. After all, the world relies on soil for 95% of our food production. Traditionally, soil has been always linked to agriculture, but that's not all. If, if the water is not purified by soil, we wouldn't have clean water to use every day. Soil is the world's largest water filter. As the water percolates through the soil down to the groundwater, it gets cleaned for us. And it may start out with bacteria and toxins and all sorts of filthy stuff. By the time it gets down to the groundwater, it can be pristine and pure. Soils are also important for ecosystem services. What's that? Invisible processes that are taking place in nature. For instance, carbon sequestration. We don't see it, but through all the process that is taking place via the photosynthesis of plants, the carbon dioxide that is in the atmosphere is used by plants to convert it into energy, and that goes through the soils. Soil contains more than three times the amount of carbon in Earth's atmosphere, and four times as much in all living plants and animals combined. Look at this NASA map that charted CO2 in the atmosphere over the course of a year. You'll see it goes red with tons of carbon, right when farms across the world are tilling the land. Then by mid-June, as plants are ready to harvest, it's all green, meaning those plants are absorbing some of that carbon back, depositing it into the soil again. Again with the discovery of a single microorganism in a pinch of soil. Soil also provides the basis for antibiotics. Truly through their efforts, the earth has now been made to give back life. And so today about three quarters of our antibiotics that are used in clinical settings actually derived from soil bacteria. Medicines derived from soil bacteria changed healthcare. 
removing the top 10 causes of death, like typhoid fever, tuberculosis, and typhus. Drug-resistant bacteria and a lack of new antibiotics could kill millions every year. Doctors say the world needs new antibiotics to be discovered in order to tamp down on these resistant infectious diseases. We know only 1% of what is living in soils. We need to discover them because otherwise we will have only the consequences. The major cause for this soil degradation that happens are unsustainable agricultural practices, overgrazings, deforestation, and improper land use. And changing climate is also worsening that. By 2050, soil erosion may reduce up to 10% of crop yields. That's like removing millions of acres of farmland. Erosion is a natural process, but it can be exacerbated by people. And now it's much faster than soil formation rate. In some countries, like the United States, soil erosion is 20 to 30 times faster than soil formation rate. In some countries, it's over 100 times faster. Take the plow as an example of human impact. So basically, farmers look at tilling as a method to prepare seed bed because they wanted to have a clean field free of any residue and also soft and firm that allows the seed to germinate and have a perfect crop. So we didn't realize that this aggressive tillage every day, every year, year after year, can also have negative impact on the soil. The plow takes soil and overturns it in mashes soil entirely. It breaks down clods into smaller particles. Those particles make soil vulnerable to wind and water. Soil erosion has been accelerated tremendously in the last couple hundred years as farming has become more and more intensive. And most of that is due to plowing. The good news is that we know enough to get to work and some of the ways that we're going back to historical knowledge, older knowledge that's in systems in Astro and Aboriginal culture, in West African culture, in Native American culture. But I think that knowledge is coming back into play. Regenerative farming involves a variety of practices. This includes no-till farming, rotational cattle grazing, less synthetic fertilizers, and growing both cover and diverse crops. Farmers could go to no-till agriculture, which means not plowing, plant cover crops, which provide the cover for the land when the main crop is not there, and also use more mixed cropping, where they're using some of these deep-rooted perennials on a small portion of their land. They could reduce erosion dramatically, if not completely. We need to try not to destroy the soil structure, because below, the soil is organized in a way in which there should be a space for the water to flow, for the oxy oxygen to circulate. But if you just compact it, your soil is not alive anymore. You need to ensure that there is always food for your microbes to eat there, meaning that you need to get my organic matter. Integrating animals is one way to do this. Think of good old-fashioned manure cover crops add organic matter or carbon to the soil. So that's an example where we really don't have to sacrifice yield at all. And the practice is relatively inexpensive. Sometimes farmers can even harvest the, the crop that's used as the cover crop. And then they have a second line of income. Economic studies show it can be more profitable to do this kind of farming. We worked with over 100 farmers in corn and soy systems across the Midwest and saw that growing corn by $24 an acre and for soybeans, that was a $17 an acre reduction in cost. But they also saw that net farm income when you accounted for the revenue that they got as well, up to $52 per acre for corn and 45 for soybeans. According to the USDA, about 21% of cultivated cropland in the U.S. right now is continuously using no-till farming. Companies like General Mills and PepsiCo are betting big on it. And companies that manufacture plows, like John Deere, are making equipment for no-till farming. You need investment because many farmers know what to do, but they don't have the means, they don't have the tools, they don't have the resources to invest because agriculture, unfortunately, does not make you rich. I think right now the current policy are not really encouraging farmers, but it can change. One of the first steps may be to rethink subsidies. 
we really need to find the ways to make it possible for farmers to make the move toward these sustainable practices. And that can be done through crop insurance, which could reward farmers for adding carbon to their soil, which will enrich the soil and make it uh, healthier and less likely to erode. For example, the U.S. government spends billions in crop insurance subsidies. Those subsidies will cost the nation nearly $1 billion in 1940. It pays farmers when their crop yields or revenues decline. From 1995 to 2020, the program paid over $247 billion to farmers for causes of loss, like drought, extreme weather, and declines in prices. According to the World Resource Institute, some of these programs may encourage farmers to use an excessive amount of pesticides and fertilizers in the quest for immediate yield improvements growing more food without accounting for how these chemicals can damage the soil and hurt long-term productivity. There's been discussion of uh, soil subsidy or soil insurance. For example, crop insurance, instead of being based on how much corn one produced last year, could be based on the health of the soil. And so farmers uh, are reluctant to take say 10% of their corn out of production and replace that 10% with prairie plants, even though just that small amount will prevent most of the erosion that occurs on the land, they can't do that because they'll get 10% less crop insurance. That's kind of a perverse system. In the short term, it costs money to make, make the change. So we need to compensate farmers for the cost of making those changes to sustainable practices this pretty rare win-win-win. Um, it's good for the environment, it's good for the farmer's bottom line, and it's good for society as a whole.